Hello and welcome to the episode 263 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. In this episode, among other things, we'll see the Beatles participating to a charity event, working in the studio and signing a new contract. On the 20th of September 1960, George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney, plus Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed another four and a half hours for their residency at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles, now a quartet with Paul McCartney on bass, had an evening engagement at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Almost the same scenario in 1962, with a lunchtime engagement at the Cavern Club and the Beatles featuring Ringo Starr on drums. Moving on to 1964, we have the Beatles taking part to a charity event called An Evening with the Beatles, in favor of the United Cerebral Palsy of New York City and Retarded Infant Services. 3,682 people paid $100 to attend the show at the Paramount Cinema in New York City, New York, while the Beatles and the other artists on the bill gave their services free. This was the last engagement for the band in North America before their return in England. In 1966, the day after the press conference in which he asked for more privacy, George Harrison decided to give an exclusive interview to BBC Radio's Donald Milner, talking for about 10 minutes about his religious beliefs and Eastern philosophy. The interview, edited down to 7 minutes, was broadcast on the 11th of December for the Lively Arts programme, aired between 4 and 4.30 pm. After the interview, George and his wife Patty left the hotel and Bombay, traveling through the country and visiting its temples, ending up in Kashmir. They were joined by Ravi Shankar and eventually spent some time on a houseboat in the middle of the Himalayas. The couple also visited the city of Benares, while the religious Ramila festival was on. In 1967, the filming of Magical Mystery Tour continued at the West Maling Air Station in Kent. In 1968, instead, the work on George Harrison's Piggies was almost completed at the EMI Studios, in a 7 to 11 pm session. Overdubs of George's lead vocal and a tape loop of Pig's grunting, prepared by John Lennon using the Abbey Road sound effect tape Volume 35 Animals and Bees, augmented with Pig Light grunts recorded in the studios during the evening were superimposed to the work done on the previous day. George's vocals were treated with a filter, reducing the frequency spectrum and making the part sound a bit like George had sung it while pinching his nose. Also during the session, a tape loop was created for Glass Onion on a four-track machine. One track contained a telephone ringing, another a single organ note, a third BBC football journalist Kenneth Wollstenholm shouting it's a goal, and a fourth containing the sound of a glass being shattered. The loop was extended to last 2 minutes 35 seconds. Let's stop dead for a second and talk about how you can help our community grow, shall we? You can send me a comment about what you like of this podcast, or you can talk about it with your friends. Even just something as small as that can make a world of difference. If you want to do more, please visit www.simonmas.com support to see what you can do to help. Thank you! Let's close the episode with a bomb exploded on the 20th of September 1969. The occasion was the signing of a new recording contract by the Beatles. Their manager Alan Klein had worked well and had convinced DMI and Capital to renegotiate the existing terms in favor of the Beatles. The existing deal gave the band 17.5% of the US wholesale price for each record sold, but Klein managed to have that increased to an unprecedented 25%. 
On their part, the Beatles agreed to deliver two albums of new material each year, either as a band or individually, until 1976. Klein also managed to strike a great deal for Apple Core, which was given the right to manufacture and sell Beatles records in the US, on top of receiving the right of determining how Beatles records were to be sold all over the world. This was an important deal that gave a regular influx of money to Apple, and a 43% increase in the Beatles' personal earnings from the sale of their own music. The signing of a new deal was a much less joyful occasion than you can imagine, though. George Harrison was missing because he was visiting his mother in Cheshire. Paul McCartney used the opportunity to talk about his future ideas involving the band. John kept saying no, until, in his own words, it came to a point that I had to say something. So I said, the group's over, I'm leaving. The decision had been taken on the 12th of September, check out episode 255 for that, but Klein had advised John to keep it hush until the signing of the new deal. Now, with the deal signed, John finally blurted it out. According to Paul McCartney, quoted in the anthology book, everyone in the room was rather shocked. It didn't take a genius to know that John's leaving the Beatles meant the end of the band. This is also the end of the episode, but not the end of our trip into the history of the Beatles. Join me tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.